A figure skater born and raised in the U.S. has come under fire in China, all over a fall she took during her Winter Olympics debut. Part of Team China, online critics are now attacking her unusual family ties. Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai denies accusing anyone of sexual assault. That's after posting on social media last year about an incident involving a former communist official. Now, some are questioning whether she's speaking under duress. Outrage erupts online over one Taiwanese Olympian's practice session. She was spotted wearing a Team China uniform. Quarantined Olympians report poor conditions in Beijing. Reports range from losing weight and lack of proper food to sleeping in clothing out of fear. And a Chinese telecom giant is protesting. The U.S. telecom watchdog banned the company from providing service inside the country, citing espionage concerns. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. A U.S.-born figure skater gave up her American citizenship to compete for China. But she fell during her Olympic debut, and now the Chinese public are decrying her performance and her family ties. Some are taking aim at her father, an artificial intelligence scientist who recently returned from the U.S. to China. Let's take a look. For U.S.-born figure skater Zhu Yi, the 2022 Beijing Winter Games is the first Olympic experience on Team China. And she seemed eager to impress the Chinese public. But netizens in the country turned on the athlete after she fell in two events at the Olympics. For the netizens watching the Olympics in China, they took a very serious political stance. They don't see the competition as a platform to engage with foreign athletes in a friendly way. They see it as a battle of shame and glory between nations. Drew failed to land two separate jumps and finished last in the women's short program team event on Sunday. The next day, she fell again, twice, in the women's free skating event. Her flop knocked China down from third to fifth in the team standings. Drew faced immediate backlash on Chinese social media. Hashtags like Drew Yi has fallen and Drew Yi messed up trended on China's Twitter-like platform Weibo, gaining more than 200 million views within a few hours on Monday. One netizen wrote, how dare you skate for China? And another comment brought up her former U.S. citizenship and her inability to speak fluent Chinese, questioning, is she an undercover spy? But why is the Chinese public so furious? Tang says it's because the Communist Party has politicized sports. So this makes Jews' competition, to a certain extent, no longer a sports competition, but a highly political task given by the party. Because in most of these netizens' concepts, they think only athletes who get good ratings can show their patriotic. In addition, critiquing Drew's performance, other Chinese netizens have raised questions about her selection for the Olympic team, pointing the finger at her family ties. Drew's father, Drew Songchun, is a well-known artificial intelligence scientist. He reportedly left the U.S. and joined a university in China under Beijing's Thousand Talents Plan. Beijing claims its program is to recruit leading international scientific experts. But both the U.S. and Canada have warned it's a tool for Chinese espionage to steal new technologies. Nevertheless, the fierce backlash against Drew exposed a persistent problem in Chinese sports, the pressure to perform. Medal counts have long been touted by Beijing as a sign of national strength. These Western countries don't have such a strong political mindset. Their citizens won't compare your athletics level with the level of your patriotism. They are two different concepts, but in the CCP's propaganda of brainwashing, it confuses the two and uses this kind of national sentiment to add legitimacy to its own regime. Later, the hashtag criticizing Drew on Chinese social media was seemingly censored, but the harsh critiques and pressure seems to have gotten the better of Drew Yi. She was seen bursting into tears on the ice during the latest event on Monday, saying she couldn't hold it back. Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai has denied she ever accused anyone of sexual assault. She says she was the one who deleted her social media post in November, the one that appeared to make such a claim. Libby Hogan reports. Chinese tennis player Peng Shui denied she ever accused someone of sexual assault in an interview with a French newspaper Le Kip. She told Le Kip that she herself had deleted the social media post in November that made the claim. 
The well-being of Peng, a three-time Olympian, became a matter of global concern in November. That's when she appeared to allege on social media that a former Chinese vice premier, Zhang Gali, had sexually assaulted her in the past. However, in the interview with the newspaper in a hotel in Beijing, she said it was, quote, a huge misunderstanding. She added that she did not want, quote, any further media hype about it. Peng's social media post, deleted quickly after it was posted on China's Twitter like Weibo, led the Women's Tennis Association to suspend tournaments in China. It sparked an international outcry about her safety. On Saturday, the International Olympic Committee had a face-to-face -face meeting with her over dinner in Beijing. Peng Shui informed the president that she would attend several events at the Winter Olympics over the coming days. That's according to an IOC statement. She also said she intended to travel to Europe when the pandemic is over. Discussion of the scandal has been heavily censored in China's tightly controlled cyberspace, and searches for Peng's name on Weibo continue to show no recent search results. Peng Shui met with a French reporter at a hotel inside the Olympics bubble. She was accompanied by the director of the Office of the Chinese Olympic Committee. He also translated for the interview. And the French reporting team brought their own interpreters to ensure the translation was correct. Peng Shui said her sexual assault allegation against a former Chinese top official was a huge misunderstanding. And the International Olympic Committee said it's not up to the IOC to judge whether Peng can speak freely. Anna Rodriguez has more. A spokesman for the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, says it's not their place to judge whether the latest interview with Chinese tennis player Peng Shui came about as a result of external pressures on the Olympian. Uh, we are a sporting organization and uh, our job is to uh, remain in contact with her and as we've explained in the past, uh, to carry out personal uh, quiet diplomacy, to keep in touch with her as we've done, to meet her in person as we've done. The spokesman confirmed the IOC President Thomas Bach and IOC member Kirsty Coventry met Peng on Saturday. He said Peng expressed her intention to travel to Europe when the pandemic was over, and Bach invited her to Lausanne to visit the IOC. While the Beijing Winter Olympic Games are underway, a distant Chinese artist who years ago helped to design the Beijing National Stadium had tough words for the Chinese regime and others that kowtowed to it. I think it's really, really unbelievable after 14 years of this uh, this game same game returned to the same country a country not developed an inch in uh, towards uh, a better human rights and a better uh, uh, freedom of speech condition he took aim at the international olympic committee saying the Winter Games means big business for them. The Western country's diplomatic boycott of the Games is a disguise, and in reality, their business as usual. Anna Rodriguez, NTD News. Back on the Olympics front, the International Olympic Committee, or IOC, is addressing an incident with a Dutch reporter. The committee said Saturday that a Dutch reporter was dragged away by Chinese security staff while broadcasting live on the air. The IOC called the issue an isolated event, one that wouldn't impact foreign reporting of the Games. But the reporter says he and his colleagues have been blocked by Beijing security on several occasions. The journalist had been delivering a live report to public broadcaster NOS on Friday evening during the Games opening ceremony. That's when security officials surrounded him and one forcefully dragged him away. IOC spokesperson Mark Adams said the organization has been in touch with NOS, adding he believes someone was being overzealous, referring to the security staff involved. On the flip side, NOS says none of its staff have spoken to anyone from the IOC. The reporter involved is the broadcaster's China correspondent. He said the incident wasn't the first of its kind. In a Saturday Twitter post, he wrote, In recent weeks, we, like several foreign colleagues, have been hindered or stopped several times by the police while reporting on subjects related to the games. Concerns have sparked over whether visiting media will be allowed to report freely in China during the games. 
But the IOC has repeatedly assured that its contract with Beijing would allow every participant, including athletes and media, to speak freely within the Olympic loop. With the Beijing Games in full swing, a Taiwanese Olympian is taking heat at home. That's after footage of her practicing while wearing a Team China uniform went viral Thursday. According to the South China Morning Post, Wang Yuting is one of the four Taiwanese athletes competing in the Beijing Games. She says wearing the suit was a show of friendship toward a Chinese competitor. But Taiwanese netizens describe her outfit as an eyesore. They flooded her social media accounts with negative comments. One user questioned, don't you know you have become a propaganda tool of China? Another called the situation ridiculous, writing, if you want to represent the Chinese team, get out of Taiwan. On top of the social media backlash, a Taiwanese politician is accusing Huang of lacking political common sense. The online spat comes amid high tensions between China and Taiwan. For both of them, national identity is a highly sensitive issue, especially during the Olympics. Beijing regards the island as part of its territory and believes it should be brought under Chinese control by force if needed. On the other hand, Taiwan enjoys its own constitution and democratically elected leaders. To distinguish itself from mainland China, Taiwan's Olympic team will compete under the name Chinese Taipei instead of its common name Taiwan or the island's formal name, the Republic of China. Taipei is the name of Taiwan's capital city. At the same time, Japan seems to have something to say about that naming decision. During the Olympics opening ceremony on Friday, Japanese public broadcaster NHK referred to the Taiwanese Olympic delegation as Taiwan rather than Chinese Taipei. The outlet also used the same term last year during the Tokyo Summer Games. What's in a name? For Taiwan, it carries a lot of meaning. And Japan isn't the only nation taking a stance. The House of Representatives just passed new legislation on Friday, calling to change Taiwan's de facto embassy's name in Washington from Taipei to Taiwan. Because Beijing sees Taiwan as its own territory, it stepped up efforts in limiting the island's participation on the global stage. Up till now, during its international engagements, Taiwan could only use the name Taipei or Chinese Taipei to refer to itself. That's instead of Taiwan or its formal name, the Republic of China. But the new bill seeks to change that. It's called the America Competes Act of 2022. On top of renaming the Taiwan office, it's also primed to boost Washington-Taipei relations in other ways. That includes ramping up assisting for Taiwan's defense capabilities, global participation and cooperation in technology and trade. The bill would also invest billions of dollars in American manufacturing to help compete with China. It especially targets the semiconductor or microchip sector. In a statement, President Biden welcomed the passage of the act. He called it a critical vote for the country to outcompete China and the rest of the world in the 21st century, adding that America can't afford to wait. And in Beijing, quarantine Olympians have had enough. Russian biathlon competitor Valeria Vanetsova said on Instagram for one of the hotels, My stomach hurts. I'm very pale and I have huge black circles around my eyes. I want all this to end. I cry every day. I'm very tired. She posted a picture saying she had eaten the same thing for five days. Plain pasta, sauce, charred meat on the bone, a few potatoes and no greens. Vanetsova noted she was losing weight and said her bones were sticking out. And she's not the only one with complaints. When Eric Frenzel headed into the isolation room after testing positive last Friday, his team quickly found the conditions there were unacceptable. Frenzel, a Nordic combined skier, has won three Olympic gold medals. And from the Olympic Village, Germany's team chief Dirk Schimmelfenig told reporters that the cleanliness, food quality and Wi-Fi all need immediate improvement. Yuka Yalonen, the head coach of the Finnish men's ice hockey team, complained in a press conference about the food. He said one of his team members tested positive upon arriving in Beijing. Since then, he has been in quarantine and a couple of times a day he served cold and tasteless spaghetti bolognese. The Finnish team doctor said the athlete is no longer infectious and that the ongoing isolation is not medically justified. 
The doctor said, quote, now it looks like it's more of a culture and a policy. Polar skater Natalia Melyushka describes her quarantine as a horror story. She says she was put in an ambulance at 3 a.m. in the morning after being released from quarantine. She said she didn't feel safe and was crying like crazy because she didn't know what was going on. Melyushka said she slept with her clothes on after that. The skater was also excluded from taking part in the 500-meter heats on February 5th. Melejuska said she was ruled in and out of the game several times due to conflicting COVID-19 test results. She says she doesn't believe those tests anymore. Inside China's closed Olympic loop, its propaganda arm seems to be in full swing at the 22 Beijing Media Center. An Asia correspondent for Swiss radio and television shared an image on Twitter, capturing the center's information desk. It shows a book by communist leader Xi Jinping on full display, available in various languages. The book is titled Xi Jinping, The Governance of China. It's a collection of Xi's words and writings, mostly about his political philosophy as the current leader of the Chinese Communist Party. Nearly 2,000 journalists from nearly 500 different media outlets visit the center where Xi's book is displayed. The center provides services for them while they're in Beijing covering the games. The center's political display seems to be at odds with Beijing's official rhetoric against what it calls the politicization of the Olympics. That's after a series of international diplomatic boycotts against the Beijing Games due to China's human rights record. As for what's in Xi Jinping's book, it's a three-volume collection. In it, the CCP leader emphasizes the concept of socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. The term socialism with Chinese characteristics has become a guiding principle for the Communist Party since the 1980s. But she added the words new era. Experts say it means she will turn away from China's traditional low-profile foreign policy and move towards a more assertive approach toward international society, especially when it comes to the U.S., Australia and Europe, plus its neighbors like Taiwan, India and countries surrounding the South China Sea. One of the three Chinese hubs for the Beijing Winter Olympics is facing severe financial problems. Tongli County massively invested in Olympics-related projects after Beijing won the bid for the Winter Olympics about 10 years ago. In 2019, the city's annual expense increased by more than three times to six times more than its revenue. That's according to British newspaper The Financial Times. The county's finance bureau head said last November that the county was suffering enormous financial problems and they required an immediate solution. Public records show that the city's gross domestic product to debt ratios jumped from 2018's 30 percent to 2020's 48 percent. The pandemic and Beijing's stringent virus prevention measures added a blow to the situation. The Financial Times reported that a ski equipment store owner left the county recently because he's struggling to pay the annual rent for his store, which is over $30,000 a year. He said the ski season ended early this year because of the regime's rigid zero-COVID policy, but he didn't get any compensation. The regime's tough pandemic restrictions take tolls on jobs and the economy in the region. Several ski resort executives said their revenue fell by more than half in 2020, and now it's shrinking again. A Chinese telecom giant is disputing America's latest crackdown on its U.S. operations. The telecom giant is China Unicom. America's top telecom regulator, the FCC, banned the company from providing services in the U.S. back in late January. This means China Telecom's U.S.-based customers will need to find other service providers by April 4th this year. The Chinese company has more than 300 million subscribers globally. The FCC says China Unicom poses a threat to America's telecommunications networks. That's because China Telecom is controlled by the Chinese regime. The FCC says this could allow Beijing to spy on and disrupt U.S. telecom communications. China Unicom denies the allegation, saying it would proactively protect the rights and interests of the company and its customers. Washington has become increasingly concerned about the risk of Chinese espionage through telecommunications. 
And Congress has asked the FCC to kick Chinese equipment from U.S. communications networks. The agency has since started to crack down on a list of Chinese telecom companies. That includes Huawei, ZTE, Pacific Networks and Comnet. Since the Trump administration plays multiple Chinese companies on the trade blacklist, you may be surprised that U.S. semiconductor firms are still exporting to China. Now, Republican senators are urging the Biden administration to close a loophole in export controls on China's top chipmaker, SMIC. They call it a clear national security threat. NTD's Faye Quarter has the details. Republican Senators Bill Haggerty and Tom Cotton have sent a letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo urging her agency to strengthen export controls to China's biggest chipmaker, SMIC. U.S. export controls should be attuned to uh, ensuring that Chinese companies don't have access to the latest, most cutting-edge technologies. The senators said they were disheartened by media reports suggesting the Department of Commerce is blocking efforts to tighten export controls on U.S. technology destined for SMIC, which they say enjoys close ties to the Chinese military. We are exporting semiconductor manufacturing equipment. This is technology that can be used to produce uh, military use goods. One China affairs analyst says another concern is that SMIC is working with Huawei, which the U.S. sanctioned over national security concerns. SMIC has become Huawei's largest chip supplier. In other words, it has become Huawei's strategic ally, posing a threat to U.S. national security. The Trump administration put SMIC on a trade blacklist in late 2020 over concerns that SMIC aids China's military. Business law professor says during the U.S.-China trade talks, China requested that the U.S. bend the rules in certain tech-sensitive sectors, including for chip manufacturing. As a result of this compromise between the United States and China, the United States allowed the export of these dual-use technologies uh, and uh, keeping these uh, products, the flow of these products, open under certain exceptions. You have to apply for a license. Normally, U.S. suppliers have to apply for a special license before shipping any U.S. items to a company on the blacklist. These licenses also need a tough standard of review. But for SMIC, that tough standard only applied to specialized chipmaking equipment. According to documents released by Congress, U.S. suppliers to Huawei and SMIC got billions of dollars worth of licenses even after they were blacklisted. Tech policy expert Stephen Ezel says SMIC also plays a key role in helping the Chinese regime steal intellectual property around the world. Uh, SMIC has been directly connected to uh, billions of dollars of intellectual property theft from Taiwanese firms alone since the year 2003. FBI Director Christopher Wray said Monday the United States is facing a new level of threat from China that's more brazen and damaging than ever before. There is just no country that presents a broader threat to our ideas, our innovation, and our economic security than China. Colares thinks the Department of Commerce should be cautious when reviewing and giving out special licenses. Under the Code of Federal Regulations, export licenses can be revoked. Faye Quarter, NTD News. And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.